My startup RevTrack has now officially made $45,000 in just two to three months. And this is an interesting milestone because it is now officially more than my software engineer's salary at my nine to five software engineering job ever was. Which to be fair, says a lot more about how terrible European tech salaries are than about this app. But nevertheless, I've now made more in three months with this app than I made in a year as a software engineer working for a big company. However, there is obviously a lot more to this story. Getting to this level where I was making any money from any startup took more than two years of trying since I quit my software engineering job at the end of 2022. But as much as I see myself being an entrepreneur a lot more than an employee, nevertheless, I think we need to talk about the realities of building a startup as a software engineer and whether you should actually try to pursue a startup on yourself or if you should just choose the stable nine to five job path as a software engineer because both of these paths have their pros and cons so if you're looking to learn the code in order to make money which for many people that is the primary goal in this video i wanted to compare working a nine to five job as a software engineer versus building a startup the pros and cons of each to give you an idea as someone who has now done both of these for which one should be the right path for you so first which one will allow you to make your first dollar with coding faster, working a job or building a startup. It is undeniable that it is going to be probably faster for you to make your first dollar if you become a, a software engineer employed by a company. These days, you can go online, you can learn to code, you can go through my program if you're interested in becoming a specifically Python developer, or there's many other options out there, online programs where you can just learn to code, learn the skills that you actually need to get hired, and you can get hired pretty quickly. Obviously, it's much more difficult in this market than it was before, but it's most likely going to take much less time than trying to build your own app. The benefit, with the job path is that is also a very structured process. You just need to learn some basics. You don't even need to become the best programming in the world, just enough to get your first internships or something like that. And then you simply learn further on the job. And in terms of how to get hired, you have your whole lead code interview process, which is very well documented these days. So it's a very structured process in terms of getting your first job. The con is that in this market in 2025, it is obviously much more difficult than it used to be. I'm not trying to say that it is easy. And with the rise of AI and everything, the competition has gone up and therefore the bar is constantly rising. And there is a bit more of a barrier to entry because for a lot of companies, not all companies by any means, but some companies, you still require a degree, which might require you to spend three, four years in university. In terms of building a startup, the benefit is that there are no gatekeepers. You can just start building. And if you find someone who's willing to pay for your app, it doesn't matter what experience you have. It doesn't matter how long you spend. If you solve a problem for someone with your code and they're willing to pay you, now, boom, you can technically make your first dollar in like two weeks or something like that. It's just that probably that is not going to happen because finding the right idea for your startup can take a very, very long time. And it's just a lot less predictable. And I find that a lot of beginner entrepreneurs have the completely wrong ideas about what they should be building and things like that. And with a startup, most likely you will have a lot of months and years of doing work, building things with zero revenue. So it's probably gonna take longer in most cases for you to make your first dollar with a startup than with a job because there's so much more that goes into building a monetizable app than simply being able to build the app. Just as an example, this is our landing page. And on this landing page, we need to have SEO, that is search engine optimization. And SEO specifically is one skill that you're going to have to master as a startup founder. Now, luckily today, this is actually much easier than it used to be thanks to tools like SEO writing what today's sponsor and specifically i'm talking about seo of writing's super page feature which is a super agent that helps you create well structured results oriented pages within minutes just as an example let's imagine you are offering software development services for startups in san francisco and you want to create some seo optimized pages or blog posts to essentially get your customers to find you within seo of writing you can access the super page feature very easily from the front page over here and that essentially opens this prompt where you can just describe what you wanted to create so i'm going to type create a service page for software development startups in san francisco include service descriptions and make it high converting we can even set the location and after this is completed boom now we have a fully created blog post for software development startups in san francisco it has like an introduction it has a bunch of well-placed call to actions 
throughout the article. It even has images. And as another example, imagine that you're a startup helping, for example, computer science students. I can tell Superpage to create a comparison of top 10 products on Amazon for computer science students. And again, we're going to see what it comes up with, which is this page right here. Again, a fully usable page. It has their reviews, full pros and cons. So if you're looking to build a startup or a business, Superpage by SEO Writing is an absolute must have. And it is available in the link below where you can get started for completely free and then use my code coder25 for 25% off your subscription. That is coder25 for 25% off in the link down below. And with that, let's keep going with the video. Now, which path will make it easier and faster for you to make $10,000 a month? And I would say here, it depends largely on where in the world you are. If you are based in a tech hub like the San Francisco Bay Area, New York City, or in a lot of the other high paid markets, for software engineers and and specifically if you have the right to work in one of these locations then you're going to have a very good chance of making potentially ten thousand dollars a month quite quickly because these markets simply pay so well however if you are from india or you're from a another developing country or you're from the uk where salaries just aren't that high it can potentially take you much much longer and there's not that much that you can do to fast track this process with a startup the benefit and the beauty is that no matter where you are in the world you have access to the exact same opportunities as everyone else it doesn't matter if you're from india or san francisco in order to make money you just have to build something that solves a problem to someone right? and if you do it people don't care where you're from and often with a startup if you find an idea that works it can very quickly be scaled to thousands and thousands of dollars a month i mean just to share my journey my first startup that i tried that i've shared on the channel completely failed we worked on it for six months it made zero dollars but with the second startup as soon as we made the first dollar within literally two weeks of that we had made twenty two thousand dollars so with a startup when you find that right idea it can be very quick to get to ten thousand dollars a month whereas with a job if you are based in a market where entry-level salaries are above that mark or you have access to that then in that case with the job again it can be faster because it's probably going to be faster if you to get a job than to find the right idea for your startup but if you're not based in one of these tech hub markets then most likely it is going to be faster with a startup to reach ten thousand dollars a month although obviously no, no one can predict this it is always going to depend now talking about lifestyle so this is going to be very subjective when you're working a job as a software engineer what you have is stability you have a paycheck that is coming in every single month it is very predictable so you're probably going to have much less stress you can plan out your future much better as long as you stay good enough at your job that you don't get fired there's a very clear progression in terms of your pay and things like that the downside is that you have less freedom you have a company that is paying you that essentially controls you they get to tell you when you can go on vacations they get to set your schedule if you have a call at a time when you really don't want to have a call there's not much you can do about that you have to deal with commutes if you're working from the office you have to deal with office politics and like kissing the ass of your boss so if you really hate that stuff like I did personally, then working a job is really not gonna be the kind of lifestyle that you want. The primary reason why I actually wanted to build my own businesses was not even for the money, it was for the lifestyle because what I really value is freedom. Right now, I'm sitting right here in beautiful Bali in this amazing villa that I'm renting. I'm filming this video in the middle of the day because I felt like filming it right now. After this, I'm going to the gym and it's gonna be like 3 p.m. If I was working a job, even if I was able to work it remotely, I would have to always keep an eye on myself schedule and make sure there are no meetings and anything like that what i really love about this lifestyle of building my own things i get to set my own schedule i can live wherever i want i don't have to ask anyone's permission if i want to go on a boat trip in the philippines for a couple of weeks or something like that but the downsides are is that i'm kind of always on like you never really switch off you don't have weekends in the same way because your business are always running problems are always coming up now i don't mind that because i love working on my businesses i love thinking about my work but for many people that might be a problem you also have more risk of isolation because you don't have this structured environment with co-workers and colleagues that you can easily socialize with so if you become an entrepreneur you're probably going to go through what is called the lonely chapter where there's this period of time where you're just quite lonely because you're not quite good enough to reach the entrepreneur circles but you can't really relate to your old circles 
either. And with a startup as well, you always have a bit more stress because you always have the risk of what if everything fails. Luckily for me, I have multiple income sources, I have multiple businesses, so I'm not super stressed about that. But especially in the beginning when I first left my job to do my business full time, which by the way, at that point was just my YouTube channel. I didn't have a successful startup yet. It was much more stressful because at any month, like things could just crash. What if something happens to my channel or something like that? So if you value stability, the job path is going to win. If you want freedom, you probably should build a startup. And finally, let's talk about ease of reaching financial freedom, which is defined as just having enough money invested, where if you take, for example, the 4% rule, so you take 4% of that or 5% of that, and that amount could then pay off your entire lifestyle. So if you choose to, you could entirely retire. So here again, it's kind of going to depend on where are you from in the world. If you're able to work a big tech job at Google or something like that, you could potentially reach financial freedom extremely quickly. It's one of the few jobs in the world where you can do that just by working a nine to five job and not having to work until 65, at least if you're in investing aggressively. And the benefit with your job as well is that it's going to be a clear defined path. So when you get your salary, as long as you don't get fired, you have a pretty good idea of how your pay is going to progress. Whereas with a startup, it's going to be a lot more unpredictable. You could be making one amount right now, but then next month it could either go down or it could go up substantially. So it's much more difficult to predict, which at least for me personally, it's made me much more conservative in terms of my spending. However, assuming things go well with your business, there is generally a lot more potential for you to grow the income much faster and scale it down with the job because with the job, you always have a ceiling. Like even if you're the best person in the company, you're not gonna make 10 times more than your salary. Like there is just a kind of ceiling because you're always a cost to the company. With a startup, if you know what you're doing in terms of marketing, you constantly improve the product, and it actually really works for a lot of people, technically the sky is the limit. So if you wanna build wealth fast and get rich fast, with a startup that is probably gonna happen faster, again, as long as you get to the point of at least having the idea that is making some money in the first place. The other benefit of being an entrepreneur that not many people talk about is that you can optimize your taxes and your general finances a lot more than when you work a job. When I worked a job in the UK, in London, there was very little I could do. Like the job was tied to the UK. I could only spend a certain amount of days outside of the UK when working that job. Whereas now when I work myself, again, like I said, I'm right now here in Bali where you get amazing lifestyle for very low cost. So I can reduce my lifestyle cost down to very low amounts while still getting an amazing lifestyle in a lot of more affordable countries. And I can do that because I can work from anywhere. The other thing I can optimize is taxes. So assuming you're not an American citizen because American citizens get taxed wherever they are in the world, you can simply leave your high tax Western country, move to a place like the UAE where I have my main residence, my main home and completely legally pay as little as zero percent taxes on all of your income. So just compare even the same income of you sitting in San Francisco in California from a job. Let's say you make $20,000 a month, which is a very high amount. And let's say you make that same amount from a startup. In San Francisco, you're paying 10,000 of that 20,000 just in taxes, so it's gone straight away. And then for even a decent lifestyle, you're probably spending at least like $7,000 a month. So really you're only saving $3,000 a month at the end of it. But if you have the same amount of income from your own business, what you can do is move your residence somewhere else where you have much lower tax. Now you have no taxes. So 0% of that is going to taxes. But let's say you spend half the year there and half the year you spend in places like Bali or Thailand where you're gonna get much lower cost of living. You could feasibly live a very nice lifestyle overall for around on average $5,000 a month, leaving you savings of $15,000 a month, which is a massive difference to the amount that you would have in San Francisco. So that is really why I always wanted to become an entrepreneur. So what would I recommend for most people? Well, what I would actually recommend is to do both. If you want to be an entrepreneur, I would still recommend getting a job first. Why? Well, first of all, because you're going to make that first dollar faster. You can start making some money to pay your bills much faster than with a startup. With a startup, you have to be prepared to spend one to two years or even much longer than that while making zero dollars. And unless you have rich parents or you have a ton of savings, most likely you're not going to be able to do that. So you need something to pay the bills in the meantime to so get your job from nine to five that's getting you whatever amount it is. It doesn't even matter because what that job is also giving you, it is giving you skills, it is giving you experience. And then from five to nine, you can spend the free time that you have and the skills that you're learning to now build your dreams, to now build your projects on the side. And then once your project succeeds, once it starts making money, and ideally it, it far exceeds your salary consistently, you can then quit your job, go full time, and then start scaling and make a lot 
more money than your colleagues ever will. If you have entrepreneurial dreams, that is what I would recommend. If you want to hear the details of how I built this startup, the mistakes from my first startup that I fixed and now made the second startup succeed, I recommend you watch this video right here. And again, subscribe to my free newsletter down below if you want to hear more detailed startup tips. With that said, I will see you in the next one.